Hi guys, welcome back to another Sportfish Virtual Show video. For this next one, we catch up with Howard Croston, who's product manager at Hardy. And we meet up with Howard on the beautiful Chatton Trout Fishery in Northumbria and watch Howard put a couple of the new Hardy Ultralight rods to the test. Howard shows us some really great tips, both for nymphing styles and lure fishing styles, to help you get the most out of your still water fishing. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the film. I've come to a, a corner of the lake um, that is a little bit shallower than the rest of the lake. The reason being, there's two main reasons. We're in the early season right now, um, so the water temperatures are quite low. With that being said, the shallower areas of the lake will tend to warm up a little bit quicker than the very, very deep areas. So if there's going to be any sort of real insect activity around lunchtime, I'd, I'd probably expect it to be in this part of the lake. The other reason I've come to this particular bay is that there is quite a strong wind that's sort of blowing into the bay. Now, that is going to carry any of the fairly recently introduced fish also down into this part of the lake. So I'm sort of hitting two birds with one stone, really. I've got an area that could have resident fish that are naturally feeding, but I've also got the more recently introduced fish potentially being pushed into this area by the wind. Um, the other good thing about this bay is, is that it's actually quite shallow out to the right, but there is a pronounced drop. So it comes out shallow, then it starts to grade in a little bit. And there's some weed beds out there around that drop off. For any kind of fishing, structure is often one of the key things to look for. So even in small still water fishing, where I've got that nice change in depth, weed, slightly higher water temperature, and the advantage of fresh stockfish potentially being blown in, this for me is a, is a very, very good place to start off. I'm going to do a little bit of nymph fishing now in this little bay. The rod I've got is the nine and a half foot for a seven ultralight. Um, it's a good combination of being just that little bit shorter than a 10 footer. Helps me cast into the wind because I've got quite strong wind today. Um, it's light enough so that I can fish relatively fine tippet material, um, but it's also powerful enough to deal with the wind and to, to play relatively large fish with. Um, in terms of the rig I've got on, I'm fishing with a midge tip fly line, so that's a full floater with a short intermediate tip section. And I have modified it slightly by putting some black stripes on the line that you can see. Those are for looking for visual indications of a take. Most people when the nymph fishing don't realise that a lot of the takes that they get to the flies, you will never feel them. No matter how much good straight line contact you have, you won't feel it at your hand. A lot of the time you will see the line move and if you do nothing, you won't hook the fish. If you react and strike, you'll hook it every time. Um, part of the reason for that is when the fish intercepts the fly, if it feels resistance and it's an educated fish, it can instantly reject it. If it intercepts the fly, you see the line move and you strike, it hasn't got time to reject it. So when you're nymph fishing, you always look as far down the line as you can looking for movement and these little black stripes really do help you pick that out when you're fishing. So at the business end in terms of the leader um, I've put a fly on the point which will fill two rolls really. Um, it's a red bloodworm type pattern um, but it's one of the rubber leg versions so it's not specifically an out and out natural imitation. That'll appeal to relatively fresh stocked fish as well as some of the residents. And then when you go up the cast I've got a couple of very small black cormorants on the line. Now the spacing on these flies is around about five feet apart. You can play with the spacing, you can make it shorter or longer dependent on the kind of conditions that you're fishing in. Um, one of the big problems I see with a lot of people nymph fishing is that they often set up the same leader length and they never change it. That is not a good strategy. You're often better 
rigging your leader in relation to what you're fishing or what kind of water you've got in front of you. Um, so I've got about five foot between these flies and I've got two small black cormorants and a bloodworm on the point. You can see that the water is quite coloured and a lot of times I will hear people say, oh it's coloured, I need a great big fly on so they can see it. That is rubbish. Fish have got incredible eyesight. They can pick out and eat even tiny, tiny buzzer pupa in very, very coloured water. So water colour alone should not really dictate to you what size of fly you fish. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start relatively short. The first thing that a lot of people do is blast a line to the middle of the lake. A lot of the resident fish are going to be in the sides looking for food around the weed bed and the fringe. So all I'm going to do is put a, put a relatively short cast up the wind. Um, I'm going to straighten it up. It's always good to get immediate contact to your flies. If you throw it out there and just let it, let it drop with no real tension, you can miss quite a lot of takes. So I've made me cast and I'm just sort of fishing it back. I'm not fishing it too fast. I'm almost just keeping up with the wind and taking the slack out. And I'm looking down the line all the time, as far as I can, looking at those black marks to see whether I get any indication. That was the bottom, but I still reacted. You can't tell the difference between the bottom and the fish. There's no point trying. It's the same with the river fishing. If anything happens that might be a fish intercepting that fly, you have to react. When you come towards the end of your retrieve, you can see I'm sort of coming up to the end of the fly line now. There we go, there's a fish. That's a key time to get a take, just as you're coming into near the bank. So we've got a fish on the cormorant. There we go, not a scrap of that one, but still a nice little fish. There we go, just saw the line slide away there and lifted the rod. It's like the bigger one, top dropper this time. You can sort of see why the, the use of a seven weight rod is not a bad idea. I mean, a lot of these small or medium sized fisheries these days stock incredible quality, quite big fish and they do really scrap. I mean, this isn't the biggest of fish. It's probably about, I don't know, two and a half pounds, maybe three, probably two and a half. Um, but it's in cracking condition. So there we go. It's a really nice rainbow, two and a half pounds maybe. Caught right at the end of the retrieve, just on the cormorant. Saw the take and set the hook. Beautiful, well conditioned, nice finned chat and rainbow. So what's happening a little bit now in front of me is that the wind is, is blowing the line. So what I'm going to do is actually mend the line. Mending isn't just for river fishing, it's very, very useful on still waters as well to help maintain straight line contact. Now I'm coming towards the end of the retrieve again and I've got my little black marks which I can see so I'm watching them very intently for a take at this point. As those flies near the bank it's a critical time for a take because We've got that shallow marginal shelf and the weed beyond it, and that's where the fish are patrolling. So what I'll do is, as I come right to the end of the retrieve, I'll lift up onto the hang. Fishing the hang is absolutely fundamental in small still water fishing, just like it is in boat fishing. But a lot of bank anglers overlook it. There can often be one right there under the rod tip. There he is. He's taken the cormorant again. There he is.
Right, Howard, cracking start there. Three nice fish. One of them a real nice chunk of a rainbow, but you're telling me that there's, there's a lot bigger fish in here. But uh, clearly that nymphing method that you started out with was the, was the right choice to begin with. Yeah, it was, def it was definitely a good start. Um, I mean, we only had, I don't know, maybe five or six casts and we got three really nice fish. So that's, that's telling you we're sort of in the right kind of area, we're doing the right kind of thing. The, the only thing I'm going to do now, and this is, this is a little bit where the, the sort of competition angler in me comes in, is all three of those fish to the small cormorants on the droppers. Mm. Not a single one took the point fly. So instantly, I, what I'm thinking is I need to get the point fly into play now. Okay. So I need to start making that more attractive. Um, so I did have just a, uh, a red blood worm, a flexi-floss type blood worm, or an apse worm as it's, it's rightly called. Um, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to replace that with something that's bigger with more movement but also the same colour as the other flies on the cast. So basically I'm, I'm going to put a, a small uh, black lure on right okay. um, and I'm still going to fish it like a nymph though okay um, but you're so you're so rather than um, putting another small nymph on like one of your cormorant droppers going for the same color but you don't want to completely match those is there a reason why you still want to offer something a bit different on the end yeah that's a, that's a really good question so what I'm going to do is the fly that I'm going to put on is the same weight as the fly I've taken off on the point. Okay. And the reason being, part of the success of those two dropper flies may well be tied to the effect that the weight on the point's having. Okay. So the, anchoring them in the, the in point the flies helping those two dropper flies fish better. So if I go completely the same as the two dropper flies, I could actually just be taking a step back. Right, okay. What I'm trying to do now is improve the performance of the point fly. And I'm not going to change the weight, I'm just going to change the colour. When we, when I river fish a lot, when we competition river fish, we carry the flies in all of the weight variations from unleaded to very, very heavy. And in small still water fishing, I will typically carry the same fly in weighted, unweighted, and actually in a neutral buoyancy style, which is a, the same fly dressed with just enough foam in the body to slow down its fall rate. Mm. And that can be really, really critical on very heavily fished waters because the fish can often associate something sinking too quickly with something they shouldn't be eating. Right, okay, interesting. So the, the weight is, is critical. Just saw the line slide away there and lifted the rod and he was on. Good little tip when you're playing fish is to try and keep them off the surface. So you'll notice I keep a lot of flat rod angle when I'm playing them and roll the rod nice and smoothly to, to put side pressure on them. But I don't play them like this with the rod up in the air. The reason being they do that, they, they jump a lot and there's a good chance they'll, they'll throw the hook. So when I've played him in, the only time I lift the rod is when he's ready to net. And that's quite good, he's taken the point fly. So the fly that I changed just before he's eaten. So the little thought process I went through before was um, changing the point fly to try and make it more attractive by changing the colour, but I kept the weight the same so that everything was still fishing in the same way. And Bingo, the next fish I've caught has taken the small black lure that I put on the point, same weight as a blood worm, but a stronger colour profile for the coloured water and a little bit of a different swimming action. And the next fish has taken the point fly. So just a nice little trick that you can use when you're trying to work out exactly what the fish want when you're fishing on your local fishery. So I'll just slip him back. There he goes.
So we, we've come right down to the downwind bank. The wind is absolutely howling into this bank. There's no other fishermen on it because of that reason. I've just made a few short casts. I've literally had four casts and I've had two really nice rainbows, including this really nice sort of two and a half pound, three pound plus rainbow. Fishing very, very short with the same flies, but fishing close to the bank. You don't have to cast a long way in the wind. They're often right at your feet. Really good morning session. Uh, we went up to that that quite windy bay up there and put the nymphing techniques to the test and uh, pretty successful morning. But you said you're going to mix it up now and have a bit of a change. Yeah, so we, we've had a good do on the nymphs. We've had quite a lot of fish. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of lure fishing now. Um, to be honest, most people will, will resort or rely on fishing the lure, especially in these smaller fisheries. Uh, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that, it's a good way to catch fish. Um, but th there's things that you can do when you lure fish fishing which really do make it more effective. Okay. Um, so I'll take you through a, a few of the things that I so do. So now, sorry Howard, now we're on the, we're going up to the eight weight ultralight that we were looking at earlier today. So fishing the nymphs on the seven and now we've gone up a bit, is that right? Yeah, so this is, this is the nine and a half foot eight weight. Um, I'm using a slightly more powerful rod because when I'm going to fish a lure, potentially I want to be able to throw it a bit further. Uh, and also it's going to need to be able to handle some of the faster sinking lines. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use that rod that's a little bit more powerful. Um, the only other thing worth mentioning is uh, the reel is obviously a, a cassette type reel. This is the new Ultra Disc cassette that's coming out a little bit later in the year, um, which it's the lightest cassette reel we've ever made. Um, and this is this is one of my favourites at the minute. I've been testing these for the last 12 months, um, and it's just a really good lightweight piece of kit. And it's very useful for when you're doing any of these kind of small stillwater tactics where you need to change lines quite mm. a lot. Mm. It's a nice light cassette, and you can carry it easily. Nice. Um, we were on a midge tip with the nymphing setup this morning. Is that right? So, um, what what are we looking at today, line-wise, for for your first approach with the lures? Yeah. So. We've, we started with the midge tip with the nymphs. The wind has picked up a lot and the sun has come out, the cloud cover's blown off. So now what we've got is a very, very brassy sort of light on a very, very heavily broken surface. So that is notionally going to push the fish down a little bit and keep them off the top. So they're not going to be quite as high. So I'm going to start with an intermediate line. I'm not going to go straight down to a type three or a type five. The reason being, a lot of people often, they, they put two and two together and come up with six. So you look at it and think it's sunny, it's bright, they're going to be deep. Mm. You've always got to start above the fish and work your way down. The reason being, provided you're fishing over the top of the fish, there is a good chance they'll still see the fly and they will come up in the water column to uh, intercept it. Gotcha. If you go very quickly straight down below them, there's a very good chance you'll miss them. Mm. You know, because a lot of the time these fish are cruising and they're looking more up in the water column for food. So work your way down with lines if you're not getting success with the first choice. 100%. Step, steps down. Always okay. work down in the water column rather than going straight down to the bottom thinking they're just going to be there. Okay. And in terms of leader and flies, how are you going to approach it? Yeah, so I've gone quite simple. Um, I'm looking basically just over five feet, six feet maybe, to the top dropper, and I've put a, a small or a reservoir favourite on, which is a blob. Um, you know, nothing fancy about it. It's just an out-and-out -out attractor. Any particular colour preference that, that you find? You know, this is, this is a sunburst. Um, to be honest, some days certain colours work better than others. I'm a big believer, and a lot of it is in how you fish, okay. not in magic fly patterns. You know, I, yeah, I put a lot of my faith in how I fish flies rather than the exact dressing of them. So I've got a sunburst blob uh, on the top dropper, and then on the point, I've got a, a black zonker with an orange bead. Um, the only thing that's special about this fly, if you want to call it that, is it's got a, an anti-tangle uh, yeah. mono guard, a little bit like we use for turpin flies. Um, which helps stop it fouling when you're fishing it. So that's just a good little dodge that you can do on these longer tailed uh, sort of rabbit zonkers that have got a lot of movement in them. Brilliant. Nice, excellent. Let's uh, get them in there and give it a go. Yep, we'll give it a go.
Okay, so I'm going to start fishing this lure setup now. Um, what I'm going to do, the first thing is, I'm not going to blast it straight out into the middle of the lake. I'm going to fish relatively short because the, the fish might be quite close to the bank to start off with. Um, I'm also, because I've got quite a strong wind uh, pushing into my right shoulder, I'm going to just cast off the left hand side. Um, just a little bit safer, uh, helps keep the line downwind of me especially when I'm using weighted flies and because I don't have to cast as far just to start off with it still works quite well. So a nice short cast to start off with. Now the, the key thing with lure fishing really is when it lands is to straighten immediately and get contact with that fly because when the fly impacts the water you've always got a good chance of an impact take. Now if you don't turn those flies over there's a good chance that a fish can take it and you'll miss it. So you always come tight before you start the retrieve. Now with my retrieve, what I'm going to do is mix it up. So I'm going to go slow and I'm going to kick a little bit of movement into the flies. Then I'm going to stop and let it drop again. A little bit of speed, let it drop. But what I'm trying to do is really actively work the flies. There's a fish. Now that one took, literally I'd stopped and then I started to move the fly again and it intercepted it. If you just throw that fly out there and fish it back really fast and you don't impart any difference in the movement to the fly, you're missing a lot of chances. So there we go, that one's taken the black zonker. Here we go, nice little fish. We'll get another one. So straighten everything up nice and tight and let that fly fall a little bit through the water column. But I am still retrieving just to keep a little bit of tension. Let it drop for about five seconds and I'm going to start moving it. Nice pause every so often. Really what I'm trying to do is, is pique the fish's interest and its curiosity by moving the fly in different ways. So I'm letting it drop every so often there and I'm moving it steady. Occasionally I'll speed up a little bit. But I'm breaking the retrieve up a lot of the time. One of the other real key points as well when you're fishing lures, even on a small still water from the bank, is the hang. Like I mentioned on the nymphs, Fishing the hang in the side is absolutely critical. So as I come to the end of the retrieve, I fish those flies up on the hang. It's amazing over the course of the day how many extra fish that will catch you. Nothing that time. So fishing into the wind is, is always a challenge. Um, the main thing that you've got to remember with fishing into the wind is that, number one, you don't have to cast as far. The fish are typically going to be much closer to you, so you don't need to make a long cast. The other thing to remember is that good turnover is really important. So, as a, as a general rule of thumb, when you cast into the wind, I often try and stall the line. I'll try and uh, break the line with my left hand to force the leader to turn over. I just had a little bump then, it's not come to anything so I'm going to keep going and there he is. A little bit bigger this one. So there we go, uh, beautiful rainbow trout from Chatham Trout Fishery. Pretty average for this place, it's got some superb fishing, about three pounds, we'll get him straight back in the water.